Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. I'm not like other drivers because I'm a new driver, so I'm extremely cautious, and Allstate rewards me for that. With Allstate, the more safely you drive, the less you'll pay. You can save money and pay a rate based on your own safe driving. Driving safe, just another way to save when you're in good hands with Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for rating and your rate could increase with high-risk driving. I'm always on the go, which means I especially cherish those moments I get to relax at home. So if I can shop for groceries from my living room, sign me up. That's where Thrive Market comes in. I love that Thrive Market carries brands with the highest quality ingredients and sourcing methods. They restrict hundreds of ingredients across their food and cleaning categories, and I can use their on-site filters to suit my lifestyle needs. Like Jax often looks for dairy-free, um, gluten-free, or if you want no ar artificial ingredients, that's very handy. So not only do I save time shopping as a Thrive Market member, but I also save money on every single grocery order. On average, I save over 30% each time. They even have a deals page that changes daily and always has some of my favorite brands. I love cooking pasta and Thrive has the Brammy pasta that I really love and it's better than any other store brand I've tried. Save time and money and shop Thrive Market today. Go to thrivemarket.com slash handsome for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash handsome. Thrivemarket.com slash handsome. Handsome. Chatting with friends on the handsome pod. Chatting with friends on the handsome pod. Cheers. Cheers. That was really good, Fortune. This is your friend Tig Notaro, and I'm sitting here with my very handsome co-hosts, May Martin and Fortune Feimster. And it's the Handsome Pod. Oh, yeah, this is, is the Handsome Pod. Also, we can see Thomas, who I'm a little distracted because it looks like he just lifted up a giant glass of milk oh. to drink from. Are you drinking that... milk, Thomas? <laughs> what is that? Thomas, like, you're it's just... a protein shake, but it's oh. mostly milk. I didn't have uh -huh. time to make the full shake, so it's kind uh -huh. of just milk and oh, protein powder. Thomas <laughs> drinking protein over there. Come on mm -hmm. now. You working out? You getting your body building on? A little bit, yeah. There Whoa. you go. Before the big wedding. Yeah, got to get in shape for that. It, I really mm -hmm. cute if you were just drinking milk, though. Just a milky boy <laughs> having a nice milky <laughs> snack. <laughs> now, now I drink oat milk, but not just plain. I don't drink it plain, though. I'm about to gross you out. Uh -oh. Okay, what do you do? I drink unsweetened soy milk. Ooh. I mean, I also have it in my little homemade lattes. Um, yeah. But yeah, completely unsweetened soy milk. A and you do that because it tastes morning. good or it's good for you? Because it's good for me. And then it, um, I developed a taste for it. You know, mm -hmm. it's that thing of like once you remove something from your diet, you get used to not right. having. I wonder if it's like similar, like if, if you removed watching any TV or movies from your life, then. Which I have. Yeah, right. Yeah, then <laughs> then you see something like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. You're like, this is incredible because you've removed. Exactly. Other... Yeah. I'm at the <laughs> silent movie theater. <laughs> when My I kids Tom watch Jerry. Tom and Jerry. I have not watched them in decades. You're not checking back in with no. what those guys are up to. <laughs> the only animated stuff I watch would be like animated movies. I can't connect with animated characters, except when those little clips of, of this podcast, when they were animated you know that we we post on instagram mm -hmm. those i could really get i would love a full yeah i'm like well, we those like are some so more good those. yeah <laughs> the they're so like, good this takes three months <laughs> i'd watch an animated show where it was like under the ocean and we we were characters and and i was like little shrimp nose and then you were like a you Wait, know, what? I don't know. I just, I don't know. That I would just be cast... the character May is. Shrimp, little shrimp nose. I cast myself as shrimp nose. Oh, I, just... I thought this was something you saw that somebody made. Oh, no. I and I was like, just, well, let, just send May's me shrimp nose. 
just another yeah. thing I want to pitch to Netflix. Speaking of shrimp noses, how's your nose, Fortune? Oh, yeah. Oh, my congestion? Yes. How are you feeling? How do I sound? Like you have a shrimp nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel fine. I just, this is the lingering Taylor Tomlinson. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> left. <laughs> um, I'm, I may or may not have caught whatever Taylor Tomlinson had when we did. I right. think you for sure did. Because <laughs> you guys were making out. God, no. Just we good. were um not but not that taylor's not a lovely person tig would know <laughs> how dare you how you dare guys, you I, anytime there's any imp, like talk of flirtation or hooking up with someone else you both are the sweetest you're both like i would never have but you're both like may i remind you i'm happily married it's really i good. mean listen very taylor's very attractive i'm just yes a happily Fortune. married woman <laughs> <laughs> well, I I told Stephanie that I was accused of flirting with. Um, oh yeah, what was the what did Stephanie him. say? Were you in she the doghouse? She just she gave me a side eye glance of like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like I wasn't flirting. I was just telling you I was told that, and I want to get ahead of this rumor and let you <laughs> know. It. Before yeah, it before it, this town. yeah, before it gets to you. <laughs> I'm just imagining this one episode of After Midnight ruins our lives. <laughs> <laughs> My marriage falls apart. <laughs> Mine falls apart. How did yeah. you get sick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Standing next to Taylor. We're, we're like, but it was a great episode. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. Oh my god! Uh, I'm feeling yeah. I'm feeling better. Um, I just will be glad to sound normal again. I'll be glad for you too as well. Well, we can't wait for you to. I'm sick and alive. tired of this. <laughs> over here, here in shrimp nose over here. Oh, <laughs> shrimp nose. Shrimp nose. <laughs> and what is shrimp nose? Does that mean like a high pitched tiny nose? It means like your voice is like this, right? I'm a little shrimp nose. I'm yeah. I'm picturing that my nose actually is a shrimp, like a curly oh. little kind of like. Oh. Oh, that's so, disgusting. It, oh, it's rancid. Yeah. You just got to sleep, Fortune. Or, that's like really the yeah. only thing. I didn't sleep yeah. last night. I, after I did an improv show and then I went to Alana Johnston's house. We uh -huh. all know and love who I do improv with, with Stephanie. And she's so fun. And I just sat. She's got this big dumb dog, like a big pit bull <laughs> dog called Mia that just like wants to hug you hug. Like just, yeah. oh, it's basically so... alana in dog form yes does just... the dog do cartwheels around the house pretty much full of enthusiasm <laughs> for life and just like i just met alana for the first time i didn't know her you guys both have blonde curly hair and you're both rays of sunshine and how do we mm -hmm. not know each other? I know. Oh, no, girl. <laughs> she was a writer on my uh, show Under a Rock with Tig Notaro. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, she was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. ended up, I was with her husband and um, we were sitting doing something I haven't done in years, which is just like YouTube karaoke, not singing, but like we each take turns showing funny YouTube videos, which is such yeah. a weirdly antisocial thing, but it was so fun. And I discovered some new ones like. I don't know. If you have time, look up solid potato salad. And it's these okay. three. <laughs> it's these three I women. don't know if I'm going to have time. <laughs> no, you're, you're busy. You're right. You're right. <laughs> if, if you can squeeze this into your schedule, look up. On the list. So, <laughs> yeah. These three women from like the 1950s or something. And they're dancing girls. And they're like, solid potato salad. Like that. And then they start doing contortionism. Like bending their whole bodies in half. And I do love the they, seeing women from the 50s be silly. Yeah. But did they know they were being silly? What about women in the 40s? Did you like, do you like when <laughs> they're silly? Not as much into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as fun. When I was at the Groundlings um, back in the day, we used to, you know, the Groundlings is a, a sketch comedy school out here in LA. And um, <clears throat> Stephanie went there. That's where I met Stephanie. And um, I was in the sketch that these girls wrote where we all played 50s housewives. Um, and we all talked like we were from the fifties. Like, what are you doing, Doris? I'm just here borrowing some sugar. Oh, what a grand day! And like that. <laughs> and then, so they're doing these these like <clears throat> talking to each other, and they go, 
Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk to you about my husband, Randall. He's been giving it to me something awful. <gasps> and, well, what does do that you... mean, Fortune? <laughs> You're about to hear. <laughs> and she goes, I don't know what to do when taking it in the back door. She goes, oh, Doris, don't you know? <laughs> Fortune! <laughs> we all pop out. Fortune in our, Marie. In our 50s year, and we go back door butthole it's the same <laughs> as a front hole but it won't oh put a baby in your oven and oh my so God. we sing this fortune whole marie <laughs> fortune marie we sing this whole song about singing back door butthole <laughs> oh my God. in 50s Oh my god, it was so fun. There's the, there's a conception that I'm the filthy one on this podcast. I think we're learning <laughs> it's fortune. There's it a, is definitely fortune. There is a side to you, fortune, and you get away with it because you're so innocent seeming. <laughs> yeah, and just laughs. About. And just, don't you think you know, that song's catchy? Front, of back course door. it is, but it is but so in fortune, Marie. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> as your front hole. <laughs> First of all, that's incorrect. <laughs> it is not the same. Uh, it is not at different. all the very different God, holes. We should have filmed that for you too. It was too good. I would have been watching it last night and delighted. Why don't you recreate it? We might yeah. have to. I'll have to call them and say, let's get the gals back together and in <laughs> our fifties old... get I had one of those wigs that like goes out and the glasses that you know the Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. It was so yeah. funny. In my teens, I would do a character called Joanne, and her last name was No Mother, I think. And she had oh. No Mother. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I was like 19, and she was called Joanne No Mother, and she would wear a, she wore a long pink gown, and she always had new roommates. And now I think I got to bring her back. I think I mm. when I got stressed about my gender, I for a while was like, I got to be handsome. And then now oh, yeah. that I feel good like about Play it all. Play with it all. Yeah. Now you're I'm, legitimately handsome. Thank you. On the I, handsome pod. I, I didn't true. until we had this pod. None I of us were legit handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everyone read into my <laughs> kindness? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I I go pretty little lady with with um costumes. With dress ups. Yeah. yeah. I think it's yeah. so funny to be like the most feminine version of myself. Yeah. I go grandpa. <laughs> yeah, you go, Grandpa. <laughs> I would love to see Parvati in drag, like go full oh, boy. Yeah. It would. Make would me you laugh be attracted so to much. that? Well, I would be attracted to the uninhibitedness that that led to that. Like I'd be attracted yeah. to the, and who knows? Yeah, maybe I'd find him hot. I'd be. Yeah. I would just find she's so like effortlessly feminine, just in the way she uh -huh. moves. Like it's not an affectation. She just. Yeah. And, like not feminine. Like just she's like a sort of Amazon woman to me well and then i finally started watching traders and she um has a she wears headbands yes is that a normal like a, is she a headband gal in everyday life or that was for the show no no she it was like um she wanted to be a kind of character on traders and so she wore oh. all these headbands and now <laughs> Everyone in her life is like, you should start a headband brand. She's like, I, I don't know. I think I have a good question. Okay. Oh, um, May, you were a fan of Survivor. Yeah. Or still are. Famously. Mm -hmm. So you liked Parvati from a distance. Uh -huh. And you're like, this is an awesome lady. She's yeah. smoking hot. Yeah. She has the sexiest voice in the world. Yeah. Uh, this is all stuff you said. Yeah. This is not Jake's me not being inappropriate. Yeah. I am not okay. hitting on Parvy. Okay. Now she is your girlfriend. Well, we're heavily involved. Yeah. Heavily involved. <laughs> you you live together. Yeah. Is she now just your girlfriend or do you roll over and go, oh my God, Parvati is in my bed? Mm, good question. Thank you. I th had a feeling it was a good one. That is a great question. I yeah. feel like the correct answer would be to be like she's just my girlfriend i, I completely see her as just uh, a three-dimensional parvati's in your bed <laughs> parvati's in my bed and i'm yeah. still but you know what yeah. it's just it's like a place i can go in my head and tap into that is mm -hmm. so fun for me to if i let remind myself that that's who i who i'm involved with i'm just yeah. so heavily involved with. heavily involved i'm with trying her. to think what celebrity i would Oh, Carrie Russell. That that's oh, who I that think is fast. attractive. Oh, really? I think Carrie Russell's attractive. Yeah. I was not expecting to be Carrie Russell. 
Uh, let's so, see. Who do I think? Uh, Carrie so Russell. Russell. I'm trying uh, to think Carrie Russell. <laughs> uh, Carrie, Carrie Russell. We got to uh, get Oh, did that pod. come off the tongue too fast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> Wait, um, it's Carrie Russell. <laughs> what was she in? Felicity? Yeah. Felicity yeah. had famously cut her hair off and ruined the show. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a big scandal? Yes. It was a huge faux pas. People lost their minds. I didn't watch the show, but uh, in recent years, I was driving down the road, and there was a picture of her on the side of a bus, and I was like, whoa, who is that? <laughs> oh and Stephanie God. was like, that's Carrie Russell, and I was like, oh, my God, she's attractive. She's yeah. number so, one just because of that bus. Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen her in anything. I saw her on the side of a bus. <laughs> va va voom. <laughs> That's, That's what your so car funny. did. Yeah, so and good. what my mouth did. So she she had this long, beautiful locks in Felicity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was like that girl next door kind of look. And then one, one day she just appeared with like a short, curly Kind of not a bob, but like a kind of this, but (laughs) (laughs) kind of what I'm. She was like, "Give me the fortune," (laughs) but like curlier, and people just are like, "Nope." Oh my (laughs) god, we are canceling your show. Show is canceled like six months later. (laughs) Oh my god, that that is insanity. Where you think I know that it had anything to do with it, but everyone always fortune put put it It together. Must have. Yeah, because wasn't that a popular show? Yeah, people were like, absolutely not. (laughs) How like when you're like, I have this devoted fan base, and they and they're like, we love you, and then like, what if we grew our hair super long, all three of us, and we started wearing dresses? Our fan base might be like you know yeah, what, did I'm they out. turn on us yeah yeah i think mine i don't might. know but people were it was a cultural shift it wow like, mm-hmm. everyone came together not wanting this haircut on her well that and that's why i am a wonderful partner because i don't care about any of that see i can see her for who she is on the side of a bus okay <laughs> till haircuts do us part <laughs> <laughs> I remember when my dad shaved his beard, I cried. That's like a common thing with kids, right? Like, okay, well, when when you said when my dad shaved his, I wasn't sure what you were gonna say. You thought I was gonna say butthole. But he shaved his butt. No, the front. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my god! Me fortune. (laughs) Damn it! Well, it's like then as a small child you cried. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Dada. <laughs> I love Jax's long hair. She's like, what if I cut it? I go, I would love you for sure. Like, <laughs> probably don't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> probably of don't. Of course, cut I would it. love her no matter what, but also, like, don't cut it. <laughs> I did have, and I'm sure she won't mind me saying this. My, my ex, um, Lindsay, one time showed up to surprise me and had dyed her beautiful long blonde hair bright red and Mm. i I was i was 21 i was not a child and i burst into tears and i and i couldn't i I couldn't hide it i went i went oh my god i love it and then i start my (laughs) no i went to the bathroom i was like i just gotta go pee and i went to the bathroom oh i I gotta pee really quick out of my eyeballs (laughs) Uh, you just she was like, crying. Oh, she was like, "Are you fucking kidding? Are you crying? Like, I don't even I was... know who you are anymore." How do you even talk and hang out in that moment at when your girlfriend is redheaded and you're and you're crying about it like a baby? <laughs> I hope yeah. she broke up with you right away. I she was pretty pissed. Yeah, we had a pretty awkward night, and then I, I hope and then you I got dumped. <laughs> And then I got on board with it. And then okay. um, after a, f- a month or so, she she did die it back. <laughs> Year, years ago, I was with somebody. I used to have, you know, my long Dave Grohl hairdo. Yeah. And this girl I dated, she was like, don't ever cut your hair. I will not be into it if you have short oh. hair. And I was so itching to cut my hair short. Because she said that or already? No, I was just, I think I was already kind of mentioning like, I think I'm going to get my hair cut short. And she was like, don't, 
And then our relationship was really starting to go down Take the turlet. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to get my hair cut. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to nip this in the bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, sends, it sends a clear message. It's a good, yeah. uh, It's wild the, what a power a haircut has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is still like... And after I cut my hair, that I've still just had short hair since that relationship. Yeah, yeah, I've looked like this since I was eighteen, so people kind of know what they're. If getting not with birth, me. right? I mean, I've my face has been very similar f- forever, mm-hmm. but in high school, I had a triangle haircut. Oh, tr- that's what nice. What is a triangle haircut? So you didn't it's... ever have a triangle haircut? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> so it was before I knew what. Um, what uh, layering was? Oh, uh-huh. and then I did, it went. Out. I went to my grandma's beauty parlor for a long time, and Girl, those ladies, no, you did. <laughs> those ladies did not layer. Okay, uh-huh. so you yeah. just let your hair fall as it would, and you just kind of they would trim it. They didn't layer it to make mm. it curve mm-hmm. in. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So we got <laughs> sure. a layer going on here. It's curving in. So when you don't Old do tripod that, head. it's just a triangle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Should we get into our question? Sure. Yes, because it's a big yeah. deal. This it's is a, a very, very big, big deal. deal. It's huge. I don't think any other podcast has done what we are about to un- unveil. Not one. Not, Not a single one. Single one. We are completing one. A, trifecta a trifecta of greatness. Not that these people are like pokemon cards that you collect but this is huge <laughs> to have all three and my good friend and the uber talented lisa kudrow asking a question on the pod can you believe the cannot believe of the most handsomest ladies ever known in a sitcom massively popular called friends yeah and it was like oh here i'll get jen aniston to to get a question and then it was like oh should we also get Courtney Cox? And then May's like, oh, I could get Lisa. And then... And I just was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've got Alf on speed dial. <laughs> I will say, like, all three of these women, like, when I was maybe 12 or 13 and, and watching Friends, they were so inspiring. They were so... Mm-hmm. I mean, we were talking yeah. about, like beautiful women who are also very silly and mm-hmm. not afraid to be completely ridiculous it was yeah. they were such good role models all three mm-hmm. of them such amazing performances that was like the best just seeing these cool people be so fun and silly and do ridiculous things mm-hmm. yeah yeah what's and better I, than ridiculousness i um she played my mom Nothing. on on uh, feel good and i I, I'm a huge fan of the comeback that mm-hmm. with the HBO show, which was so, so ahead of funny. its time. Mm-hmm. So funny. There's no delivery like Lisa Kudrow. Oh there is God. no delivery like hers. Smelly cats, smelly cats. Okay, well, first of all, that's <laughs> I remember uh, yeah, one of my favorite singers is Chrissy Hine from The Pretenders. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I remember a friend of mine brought me a VHS. They had recorded the end of Friends where Lisa and Chrissy Hind are singing Smelly Cat. Yeah. Oh my God, and I was yeah. like, oh my Lord. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Very exciting day for yeah. me. Big oh, Chrissy she also, Hind. Fan. A couple of years ago, I think she went on stage with Taylor Swift and sung it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Do you remember that? Lisa did? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What I love about her is she's so highly intelligent we'll get to the question in a second but Mm -hmm. we're just uh, singing her praises right now so she plays these wild characters but she approaches them with like such intelligence we we kind of wrote the part of my mom and feel good with like with her in mind but we never thought she'd even read the scripts and then we said that if she said yes we were gonna this is a callback to shrimp nose in a way we said (laughs) if she said yes we would celebrate this is me and my writing partner by going to this restaurant prawn on the lawn which was oh, like a wow. shrimp restaurant fancy in and so when i got the call i got to call up my writing partner and i went see it prawn on the lawn tonight and we were wow like, yeah. what a celebration 
Well, she's an icon and she's here on the Handsome Pod. Yeah, yeah, you know her from Friends, of course. She also created, produced, wrote, and starred in the critically acclaimed HBO show The Comeback. You know her from Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion. So many other amazing things. Uh, f- feel good. Uh, she played my mom. It's Lisa Kudrow asking today's question. Hi, Handsome Podcast. It's Lisa Kudrow here. So I had a question that is so when you're performing or doing a show, you know, in front of people or even this podcast, for example, and you are just not in the mood for it that day, night, how do you get through it? How do you make it work? Mm, I love wow. that question. It's a good question. Does that happen? Honestly, it's probably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> really? All the time. It's a lot of I'm I would imagine just you get burnt out at some point, right? Well, and also life is going on, so you get bad news, you're going through a breakup, you're not feeling well, maybe you have shrimp nose or something, you know, <laughs> and uh it's I remember years ago when I was first starting out, I was opening at comedy clubs and uh, I was managed by somebody that worked at the funny bone comedy (laughs) club, you know, and uh, he, he managed me and a couple other people. And, and so I would tour with his other clients and one of those clients died. And I was told that right before I went on stage, you know, and I remember being like, here I had toured with this guy. He was so young, so funny. Brett Clausen was his name. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and then I just was introduced on stage and had to compartmentalize. Yeah, you know? I know because I feel like now that you guys have these huge profiles and your audience is there to see you, like if you get bad news, you could e- even talk about it on stage and people have patience for that and they're interested. And But if mm-hmm. when you're starting out, you can't go on and be like, well, I'm depressed. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? There isn't that same like, and you the don't have forgiveness. control of the craft. Mm-hmm. So you don't know you could bring them out of it. I mean, I guess I also had a more famous experience when I had cancer yes. and my mother died. <laughs> um, that, yeah, I was, I, but I was kind of in the mood to perform because, um, just get out of your head. Like, yeah. And wait, fortune, did we talk about this? Weren't we at a dinner right before I did that show at oh, Carrie really? Dornetta's house? Yeah. 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 And Jamie Babbitt when they were, were together. But you, yeah, we had the four of us had dinner together cause they were like, um, our, we want you to meet our funny friend. Tig. I'm like, I know mm-hmm. Tig's Wait, so funny. That was the same day as that set at large. It wasn't the same day. It okay. was um I think it was right before. Right before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because none oh. of that stuff had happened yet. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you had this like avalanche. I think a week no, no, that stuff I think had happened. Or no, it had just happened, maybe. It had happened, and I think I was about to do my show in like a few days. Oh, the Largo show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I was excited to perform because um, I didn't know if I was going to be alive, you know? Right. And mm-hmm. so I really wanted to do stand-up and have that experience again because I loved it so much. Yeah. Yeah, so. I feel like I also, I always know, like, that once I'm doing it, I'm going to have fun, mm-hmm. but it's that getting to yeah. the... Like, mm-hmm. when you guys are doing big tours and night after night, like, Fortune, do you ever get really... Just like, how do you, how do you snap out of it? I mean, life happens is the thing, you know, when you're touring constantly, there's going to be things that happen during that. Like my dad came very close to dying mm-hmm. um, yeah, recently. Uh, yeah. And I had shows like during all of this. And so you, people kind of knew this was going on. And then I'm like, Hey, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so you just had to, I had to kind of acknowledge the elephant in the room of like, you guys know that this is going on um yeah everybody i appreciate you know everybody being so lovely we're hoping for the best and you just kind of have to push through you know mm-hmm. because your audiences love you so much it's kind of you're like if you're down it's like okay i could go get this huge love injection but mm-hmm. yeah if you're just going to some club doing an opening spot and no one knows you and you're like yeah oh i could also bomb today like on top of everything <laughs> that's that sucks I had a mm-hmm. thing happen early on in my career. I was doing this tiny club <clears throat> and um, 
I was dating someone. It wasn't serious or anything, but I, I was into her and everything was like good, but she kind of was like shifting and you, I could tell that like maybe she was kind of one foot in, one foot out, but um, Oof, that's she was waiting, feeling. waiting to, you know, so I was kind of waiting for that other f- shoe to drop, but I didn't know when or if we could salvage this or whatnot. And she was going to get um like a, she possibly was going to get a job somewhere else and I was um, on stage and I had a bit at the time where I had to get out my phone and read um, <gasps> a message on saved in my photos, yeah. um, a screenshot. And I got out my phone mid mid show and no. it, the text from her popped up like she got that job and like didn't, didn't want to see me anymore. Oh, <laughs> like basically broke my up with me. God. Even though we were in a relationship, we were dating. Yeah. She just was ending things. Did you and tell I, the audience? I don't remember if I, <laughs> I really, I oh think I just Lord. went to another planet, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so was I it had Uranus? To- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. I know. Um, just eat my ass. Just eat my <laughs> ass. Call, call back. Call back. Call back. <laughs> Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. I'm a mother of two and I drive so carefully with my precious cargo aboard. And Allstate rewards me for that. With Allstate, the more safely you drive, the less you'll pay. You can save money and pay a rate based on your own safe driving. Driving safe is just another way to save when you're in good hands with Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California, subject to terms and conditions, rates vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for rating and your rate could increase with high-risk driving. So I had to like let my brain kind of go into autopilot yes. where like my emotions were like hovering above me, but mm-hmm. my brain was like doing the words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was like a yeah. out of body experience. I cancel a lot, which is bad. Like I often give in to the feeling and when I, when I should probably push through it, cause if I go to the show or, or do the thing, I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy it. But, um, I, I have my story like that is uh, I was dating a comedian and who was oh, it was a very bad like it, it was in England we lived together it had been hell like sh- she was very uh, closeted and no one knew and and then on the day so she breaks up with me in the morning and I was pretty sure she there she'd maybe cheated on me with this guy but I didn't I I wasn't a hundred percent yeah and so she breaks up with me so I pack my little suitcase. And I'm like hysterical, like really crying crazy amounts. So I go to my friend's house and that night I had to host a fundraiser for her because oh. she, she it, if she'd organized it uh-huh. and she was like, can you still host the fundraiser? And I was like, I, yeah, I guess. And she was going to be there. She couldn't and just I, hold off one day after the fundraiser. I know. I know yeah I mean it's that pressing like a, oh my god I gotta get May out of my life immediately like the chaos right I probably guess. it was extra cruel and a lot of our friends still didn't know we were together even though we'd been living together for like three years or they knew but they were like mm-hmm. in their travel companions and, travel yes. companions yeah <laughs> so <laughs> I show up to the show and I'm just like a shell and she shows up with the guy Oh, that that's she, cruel. I know. And she sits and, and I, I go up to her. I go, are you, you just arrived with him? She goes, oh, come on. I'm not, we're not together. Like I'm not. And then she sits with him and puts her head on his lap, like lies down. And I'm on stage being like, well, I'm just old weird gay Mar- Martin. <laughs> <laughs> she was but, uh, definitely effing with you. I, I think so. Oh my God. Fortune, please. I, please. Listen, I purposely try to keep it clean. And Fortune Marie. But yeah, but you just do get through it. Like adrenaline kicks in and you're yeah. like, I guess you go on autopilot a bit, but it must yes. have been, I, mean, I imagine for, for Lisa, like the schedule of filming friends, like oh my when God. they're doing 20 episodes a season or something and or whatever it was. And mm-hmm. that is a, but didn't they only thing. film one day a week, not to take anything away from all the hard work you did, Lisa, but wasn't it once well, a I've, week? I right? think those schedules were like, you have a table read one day, then mm-hmm. another day's blocking, then another yeah. day's like re- rehearsal. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. kind of like a theater thing every week. Yeah. But they were dealing with a lot of chaos a lot. Cause they were like, they're all their lives changed like overnight. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. They became like the most famous people on the planet. That's like us with handsome. That's like yeah. us, guys. Yeah. I can't we're the, my we're the LGBTQ version of friends. A hundred percent. We should have called true. our podcast friends. <laughs> <laughs> Chatting with friends, but it on the seem- handsome pot, get hear it. Chatting with chatting friends, with friends. Oh. we are ch- literally chatting with friends. Yeah, last three weeks. I but know. it seemed like from their interviews, they all started to rely on each other a lot. Like yeah. they were, the, they knew what each other was going through more than anybody. So they would just mm-hmm. like really lean heavily to get probably to. They probably got each other through some of those performances. It is mm-hmm. nice with with stand up when you know there's a couple of pals on the bill and even if you're down yeah. you're like oh, i just sit and vent in the in the greener but with acting that's that's tough even i, I mean i haven't acted that much but with feel good like I, i'm not a good enough actor i've acted to... a lot if you have any questions <laughs> yeah Tig, tell me <laughs> if you're like if you're filming a big breakup mm-hmm. scene like yes. i just filmed this big tearful breakup scene mm-hmm. and my co-star is a professional so she's we're, we're hanging out she's laughing she's singing but i'm like okay we're filming this scene in the afternoon like around lunch i had to start mm-hmm. distancing myself and just like getting in my head and mm-hmm. she's like are you mad at me and i'm like not no i'm like trying to think how i'm gonna act at all yeah. mad at you because i'm i love you <laughs> and then like we're <laughs> such good friends and then i i don't know it's tough yeah, but I guess it's just your job, right? It is. It's it's your job. And um, <laughs> I couldn't I have mean, said it any better. I mean, your dig really hit the nail on the head. Well, somebody said recently, which I really loved, uh, that's what the money's for. Oh. Like when you have any complaint about work, mm-hmm. that's yeah. what the money's for. <laughs> right, oh, I know who said it. Rory... Albanese, do you know him? I love Rory Albanese. Yeah, Rory. Oh my God. Oh, it's from Mad Men. Oh, okay. Oh, he, <laughs> or he was Rory. Mad Men. <laughs> okay, well, Rory. <laughs> Rory. <laughs> that's what the money's for. So shut up. Yeah, that but that sounds like a, Mad Men. It's such a good thing to remember when uh, when you're complaining or frustrated about yes. work. It's like, right, well, I get money for this. <laughs> yeah, gratitude is yeah is key. Mm-hmm. I had I had been taught with act in an acting class early on that when you're having to do like a sad scene or something, I used to think like, oh, let me just channel something sad. I'm gonna think about something in my life that's sad. Mm-hmm. And they were like, don't do that because then it cheapens that real thing. For oh, you. that real life experience. Uh huh. If I was always thinking about like my grandmother or something when I need to be sad for acting, yeah. then I'm cheapening that think, grief, that feeling, you know. I know good actors are just like, well, I'm in the character thinking about their experiences and what's happening in the scene. But I'm like, no, I got it. I'm going to breakups in my head. I'm listening to sad music. I'm not good enough to. <laughs> do you guys have a, on. Uh, yeah. Do you have a sad song that would put you in the I'll say mine, but it'll cheapen it for me. But I want everyone to feel how what sad, is it? Yeah. What how is sad it? they can get? OK, it's called Downtown, but not. Downtown. <laughs> this is the saddest song. Oh my gosh. Don't you get go, May crying da, da, again. Da, downtown. <laughs> when you're alone and life is making you. No, it's, uh, that would be amazing. Downtown. I get the director to blast it. Um, no, it's, uh, like, this is the saddest song. <laughs> it's called Downtown by Magical Clouds. And I think magical oh, is spelled like M A J. Is this a Canadian song? Yep. M A J I C A L and then clouds with a Z, of course. But man, it gets me. And I don't, I can't listen to it because uh, I don't want to lose it to lose its power because it's really useful. Oh, mm. yeah. Mm. Well, if it, listen, if it, it's okay to cheapen a song, you know what I mean? That's okay. Yeah. When yeah. I was about to film, I said to my mom, I'll, well, you know, I'll, I'll use one of those tear sticks sometimes. Everybody, tear sticks do help. I'm not help. opposed to tear sticks. And my mom goes, do you think Tom Cruise uses a tear stick? And I was like, uh, I don't know, maybe, probably. And she was like, <laughs> by doesn't. Tom, By Tom Cruise, do you mean Tig? Tig, no Tig. Tara. I am not above a tear stick. It's like put, putting vapor rub on your eyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. It just gets you going. And then it, and then you have to still do the, the rest of the Downtown. Work. Downtown. <laughs> when you're alone. Oh, man. Sad song. Bonnie Raitt. This is right. Cause you can't, I can't make you love, you love me. me. 
any. If you don't, if you okay, don't, wait. I don't Fortune the words. <laughs> di- is was that your go to if you if things weren't working out with a lady? Yeah. Would you crank I just that out? Go into the shower and cry and say, "Turn down the bed. Turn, turn wait. Turn down, wait. Turn down, down the lights. Turn down, turn down the bed." The bed. And down, down these Oh man, the Bonnie bear. Yeah. I, I think with me. <laughs> Fall Out Boy should do right a cover now? of that. <laughs> I've yeah, I couldn't boy. remember any of the words, but I know all the words and couldn't remember any of them. Fall Out Boy should do a version of Downtown. <laughs> oh my god, downtown. they do a good version. <laughs> <laughs> When you're alone and life is making you love like that. Yeah. Go downtown. <laughs> but you know, mm. the thing is, if this is your job, which it is our job to perform and it is our job to act, it is our job to make people laugh. It's like mm-hmm. a lot of people don't feel good or going through things and they have to go to their job. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. They have to do their job. So you, we kind of, at the end of the day, that's what you have to do you just have to kind of push through and do your job that's yeah. what the money's for that's what the money's for and then you go home and cry or mm-hmm. stare at a wall or whatever it is and just yeah deal with it then also i'm look i'm a hug i'm a hugger i uh i really do oh boy. find a i'll just ask a, a crew member for a hug. there you go <laughs> Listen. I, like a, I was premature i was in an incubator i wasn't touched enough you need I, I, touch. I, I gotta get hugs. It's your man. love language. I feel like you've you've been touched enough at this point. <laughs> I think I feel like you've it'll t- never I, be enough. I feel like you've <laughs> tapped out with touches. I don't uh, think May's tapping out with touches. You still no. don't like the touches. You I know what it. song I really like? I know you don't like the Beatles. Um, but I it's I do. I I don't. I know I, you do, but I for, fortune. Like hey, come on, cork yeah. it, shrimp nose. Um, <laughs> uh, in my life. Oh yeah, that's a fucking my great one. Life, I love you still. When I got kicked out, I listened to "She's Leaving Home" by the Beatles mm, and mm-hmm. got real emo. Also, Elliot Smith will get me there. But They're yeah. leaving home. We They're leaving home. <laughs> all my life when I'm with you. Hey, oh Fortune. Is that how it is? <laughs> if you can't reason. say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Okay? <laughs> if you can't sing anything nicely, don't sing anything at all. <laughs> also, um, Shelter from the Storm by Bob Dylan. That's oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Or Don't oh, Look Twice. Don't Look Twice. I think I might have said this before on the podcast. I think that's the best song. Don't Think Twice. If you're going through a breakup or a broken heart, Listen to Don't Think Twice, either the yeah. Bob Dylan version or the Dolly Parton version, which is a peppier version. But the Bob yeah. Dylan version is when you're really in it. Mm-hmm. It is. I, it is. Did the I call perfect, it Don't Look? Don't Think Twice. I got the title wrong. Yeah. You can look oh. twice, but don't think twice. Yeah. Think, oh. Don't Think Twice is the perfect song to get you out of your funk uh, if someone's broken up with you. And, oh, and really? can you guarantee this? I'm telling you, listen, if you <laughs> if listen Stephanie to Stephanie leaves me, you're saying I just put that song on. I'm te- all well, will be you're fine. Still, you'll still be sad because that's I'm talking about a, a more like a relationship that's more like you're just dating mm-hmm. and not like a marriage. Like me and the woman I'm involved with. Yeah, like that. And cause <laughs> if you listen to the words, together, it's like, yeah. um, ain't no use in calling out my name, girl. There's something. Gal. Uh, gal. Mm. <laughs> ain't no use in calling out my name gal da, 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 da. Is, yeah, i don't remember lyrics. the words now but <laughs> neither <it's> does he <laughs> but it's like he never knows his own saying, words. you just kind of wasted my precious, my precious time, time but don't think twice it's all right it's it's just saying like I'm bummed and hurt but also like it sucks I but I'm gonna be fine there's one line in in don't think twice that always disturbs me a bit that takes me out of it a little when it's like i once loved a woman a child i'm told i'm like yes okay well if people are telling you that's a child <laughs> no that's that he's saying he means emotionally. I, i'm gonna Wait, interpret hold it on. for let's you interpret yeah okay, uh, okay a fortune themester for- interprets bob dylan that's a he's new segment she, on handsome <laughs> he's just saying that he thought it was a woman but she was immature it was yeah, like, acting yeah. like it acted like 
It's not an actual child. I'm or just joshing. Or something <laughs> else. But <laughs> don't think twice. It's all right. It's all right. What about um, the uh, Elton John, um, Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's? Mm-hmm. That song. Know. Do you know that song, May? No. Oh, well, do yourself a favor and look up Elton John's Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's. I've said this before, but mm-hmm. the only reason the Mona Lisa is a famous painting and people think she's mysterious is because she has no eyebrows. Mm. And I didn't realize that till this year. And then when you go on, you draw eyebrows on her. It's just a normal, pretty good painting, but nothing special. My mm. son, Max, wanted uh, a print of that for Christmas. No and way. he got it and he hugged it. He was so excited. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's got a little print of <laughs> Mona Lisa. Well, speaking of Lisa... Yeah. Should we listen to Lisa's answer? Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, do I have to answer that? Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, for me, I mean, I don't do stand up, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think it works for everything, though, right? That you don't feel like doing. I make it about the other person, and that it's something that I, I, I it's it's bigger than me. It's not for me. So I just focus on the audience. You know, the up to two people who are interested in what I have to say and <laughs> focus on that so that I um, can be present and do it. And then I'm not, not in the mood anymore. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, Did any of that make sense? Oh, oh well, yeah. You, know, you, get, you don't get upset, I guess. <laughs> Her delivery kills me, first of all, of even that. I found hilarious, but yeah, completely like you get so in your head about acting and then yeah. it's like, Oh, there's another person in the scene first of all. And then yeah, mm-hmm. the audience, like they paid to be there. They, they paid to be there. showed up for you. That's what the money's for. Yeah. 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 And it is, I, bigger. I it when, is um, bigger than you in that moment. I have such a pet peeve of when comedians are like tell an audience that was funny. You should have laughed at that. Like you're mm-hmm. at, and, because very rarely, like 1% of the time, that's true. It's just like a weird dud audience or, mm-hmm. uh, but that's your job. Like, mm-hmm. the, you know what I mean? You yeah. probably, yeah. you probably said it wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I try not to ever blame the audience. Yeah. I mean, I try not to. Sometimes I walk Sometimes. out going, Ugh, that was a, that was a rough one. Yeah. <laughs> rough one. Yeah. Don't know if it was me or if it was them, but that was a rough one. Yeah, or if it was yeah. the four bachelor parties who were. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I did laugh thinking about the when we had the Indigo Girls on our show um, mm-hmm. asking a question. Uh, people kept quoting Tig's bit, being like, are they really going to ask a question? Or is Tig <laughs> just messing with us? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That would have been pretty funny. We were like, and here, <laughs> asking a question is the Indigo Girls and then the. <laughs> Nothing. And then it's not. teasing it. We keep getting <laughs> sidetracked. Thank you for promoting my Netflix special. Happy to be here. That's right. <laughs> okay. If you like the Indigo Girls, you might really like Happy to Be Here on Netflix. And then at the end of the day, if we're not feeling something, if we're there's a heaviness happening with us, or we got broke, someone's get got their heart broken. You lost somebody. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you just can't push through but then other times if you do push through then maybe by the end of that hour you you gain something too like there's Mm -hmm. some positive moment you made eyes with somebody that looked happy you heard that laughter and so at the end of the day you can come away more fulfilled from that Mm -hmm. experience as well with this podcast i mean i'm uh, you know even if you're like oh i'm tired today then you didn't you don't know you might be talking about shrimp nose fortune might sing yeah something. i had no idea shrimp nose was going to be introduced to in my life <laughs> right. i mean i wasn't feeling well today and i was mm-hmm. like like on the couch like how am i gonna get through this day and then i come on here and we laugh and it's fun and i feel good yeah well feel good there hey. you go also you can be seen on netflix thank mm-hmm. you you can see lisa being amazing and and also well, she She's like, whoa, are you going to disagree, Tig? No. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she improvised some really funny stuff, too. Oh, that's anyway. cool. She, she's a funny, funny lady. 
And that completes our unexpected trifecta that we were so excited to roll out. Um, yes. we, we thought how funny it would be for people to be like, surely not. I mean, what <laughs> a then, podcast. Truly. I mean, truly. What a yeah. podcast. What a podcast. Who what wants to a bring podcast. you the trifecta lady friends? What if we find out a lot of shows brought the <laughs> yeah. friend have, trifecta? Have three of them? Yeah, what if we find out that's kind of the main thing? It's that hacky. they only agree to do podcasts if all three of them can do it <laughs> <laughs> consecutively. <laughs> and if you're watching this on YouTube, I just want to point out that there's some kind of spirit around my head. I don't know mm-hmm. when oh, yeah. this happened, but it's there's a halo, a, an oval, it's like an light. orb. There's yeah, some I see it spirit now. guide. Yeah, like around Whoa. my head. Do you think it's my grandma? Why would it? It be might your be grandma? like Mork from Orc. <laughs> Why can't it be my, my grandma? grandma? Like, that's pretty cool that you don't use my memory to act and cheapen, cheapen <laughs> She's that. She's like, I'll just visit May. I'll just, I'll just May. sit on May's face. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, eat my ass. May likes touch. <laughs> Give me more touches. Uh, wow, that is pretty trippy. It is a true orb it's around very... your whole face right now. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna pretend that it's Fortune's grandma giving me a hug, and if it's not my grandma, which jury's out, um, who would you like <laughs> for it to be? <laughs> sitting I, on your face, sitting on my face. Don't well, say was, Carrie Russell. Uh, that's no. <laughs> hey, she's yours. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say my grandma, but now you said the sitting on your face thing. I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, uh, they don't have Marilyn, to be sitting on your face. Marilyn Monroe. Whoa. Okay. Wow. I'd like. I think. She was so misunderstood in her life, and I, I've always wanted to sit down with her and have a little on her face, sit yeah, and give her, give her a cuddle. Yeah, she did seem to get the short end of the stick in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. I'm a, a deep Marilyn Monroe fan. Well, this is your chance, bud. <laughs> oh God, she's in the room with me. I'm stroking. She's on your face. She's Stro- on face. May's stroking the orb right now. I really Fortune. am. Fortune. <laughs> You guys do have to, after you're done with the audio version of this episode, I would like for you to go on our YouTube page and fast. You can watch the whole thing if you want. It's up to you. But go to the end and watch what's happening right now with Maze. Look at Marilyn face. Monroe sit on Maze face. <laughs> it's pretty oh wild. God. What could yeah. it, because it wasn't there. It wasn't Mm-mm. there. It's just appeared. Until it's very... like a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. There is no scientific what, explanation what, like, for this. Where Marilyn Monroe could have flown into the window? Is that what you're saying? Oh, she must have flown in. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot Grandma? I left her wind- window open. Grandma. Yes? Oh, did you hear <laughs> she that? Didn't, she didn't sound like that. Oh, I did see it. <laughs> um, I feel we've come to the end of the road here on so this episode and the Friends the Gal Friends Trifecta on Handsome yes. Pod. Thank you again for joining us. Yes, and thank you to Lisa. And um, also, if you could, take just one second. I know you hear us say it all the time, but take one second of your day to subscribe to the audio podcast and to the YouTube page. And uh, give us five stars. Give us a nice review. Tell your friends. Share Share an episode. Share three episodes. Share Jen's episode, Courtney's episode, and Lisa's episode. Yeah, you why know? not? Why not? That's because what the money's for. <laughs> I'll be there for you. Yeah, I still don't know all the words, but I do know that I'll be there for you. Do you guys have any... Um... I'd like to plug my butthole. Fortune! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Or and my st- and my stand up dates. I don't have many left, um, but you can come watch me film my special in Seattle, April thirteenth at the Moor. I'm also going to be at the YouTube Theater in Los Angeles. Yeah, May eleventh, and then uh, Massey Hall in Toronto, uh, May eighteenth. Nice. I'll be at a, a Dynasty typewriter April nineteenth. And Largo, April 28th. And go to tignotaro.com for any other local Los Angeles shows or any anything TIG related, to be honest. And also don't forget to watch my new special, Hello Again, on Amazon, directed by my lovely wife, Stephanie Allen. 
Nice. One sec. I'm just trying to see if oh I. Oh my have gosh! A light. Look what's happening in your, your room orb now. Is even oh. more intense. Wow. It's, it's. I'm a little scared. The orb is really <laughs> gathering it, strength. It's like the scene in Ghost. <laughs> what the you know? hell? May we need to record every day at this time so that May has um, a visit from Fortune's grandma. <laughs> no, what's her name? <laughs> Marilyn. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe on your face. Um, I have. Uh, I'm gonna be at Largo at some point in April, and I I don't uh, just check out Instagram always, and uh, also at the in early May I'm at the, doing the Netflix is a joke festival with Brett Goldstein. Uh, I think there's an extra night added and some tickets available, so check that out. And uh, yeah, if you like this pod, let check out Feel Good on Netflix to see Lisa Kudrow uh, in action playing my mom and just being hilarious. Love you and guys. until then, <laughs> keep, oh, it. No keep it. Huh? No one keep said it. it back. Oh wait. Oh, I thought you were saying that to the fans. You were oh, saying no. it to us. Saying it to you. Wait, guys. what did you oh, say? Oh, we to love us? you. I said, oh, we love, love you guys yes. for sure. Yeah. We love you. Yeah. Wow, I thought weird. you were like, love you. Watch my watch. Feel good. Love you guys. I thought you were saying <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, I thought you were talking to the listeners. I didn't know that you know. were hey, hitting May. on both of us. May, we love you. <laughs> we love you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, uh, until then, keep it, keep it handsome. handsome. Mm-hmm.